Hey folks, Danny here at Parte. So uh, today's going to be a little bit different. I want to do some random thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm working on finalizing our knockoff projector video. Uh, I'm waiting on a couple more confirmations of just some specs uh, before I wrap that up. And then it's just a little editing and so we should have that up by this weekend. Um, but in the meantime, you know, there's been obviously stuff going on out there. I've been focused on getting things ready for the weddings that are coming up and at the same time we've had uh, some family guests that have come in so it's just been sort of, sort of this convergence of things going on, right? <clears throat> but I wanted to give some random thoughts on things that have happened and occurred and th just some things that I've seen. So, you know, I'm going to start with you, Kenneth Bird, and, and it, this is not going to be ugly. I'm just going to say, where are you? You know, you're still out there running smear campaigns, trying to talk bad about everybody for, for, you know, 30 minutes at a time, 45 minutes at a time, an hour and a half at a time. Uh, everything except for competing. You know, you're still sort of in this amateur mindset where you need to get things down at your table and blow them out, you know, with your, your fake recordings. You're not trusted. You're not a trusted resource for anything. So that's not really going to get you anywhere. And for somebody who's talked about going mainstream, what I need you to understand is there is no path for you to go mainstream that doesn't go through me. And you need to be thinking about that. See, I, I know the truth. I know that you know that. I know that you aren't even focused on that. For you, the agenda is... Keep smearing, keep smearing, keep smearing. Maybe you'll convince some little newbie that comes by and make a sale. That's all you're interested in. You're not interested in going mainstream. You actually know yourself you'll never go mainstream. You know that. You know your product's not good enough. There have been people out there who've said, well, maybe he just thinks it's that good. No. If you thought it was that good, you wouldn't have to fake your demonstrations now, would you? There would be no camera tricks necessary if it was all that you claimed it was. So I know you're not going to face the king because you're, you're scared to face the king. Facing the king would be the end. That would be the, the, the nail in the coffin for you. But if you are serious about going mainstream, my question to you is where are you because I'm ready. Well, you're down at the bottom of the hill wrestling in the mud with hobbyists. I'm on top of the hill saying, come on up. Do you feel lucky, punk? Do you? All right. <clears throat> Crow 1176. Now, I think it's sad that it ever came down to this, but here's the truth. You've proven not as deceitful as Kenneth Bird. I wouldn't use hyperbole like that and try to compare you with his level of evil. But you've been pretty deceptive. And you know, I remember, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things here. Whenever you mentioned that, you know, you knew I didn't agree with what you were about to do when you were going to send them the wrong product, that, you know, you knew what you were doing. It didn't work out, did it? Everybody's all rallied around. Yeah, Crow, go for it. That's it. It's going to be so funny. This is going to be great. We're going to get that bird. But you didn't. All it did was gave him more ammunition against you. And your reputation's taken a bit of a hit because you can't really distinguish some of what you've done from some of what he's done. It's just the truth, whether you like it or not. That's a fact. And all I was trying to do was give somebody some friendly advice to say, do not put your reputation at risk. But you've done it a few times. So... You know, obviously that's a character flaw within you, okay? But you guys want to call me into question. Now I want you to think about how idiotic that is. How foolish it is on your parts. Because of the three of us, I'm the only one who has issued out a single spec. Okay, I have more specifications on one product than you and Bird have on everything combined. No specifications. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest 
not complaints, but sort of criticisms that I get in emails from folks. And it's not like they're bashing. Let's just go into a bashing crow. It's, it's They're not really focused on that. But their commonalities and things that they say, you don't appear to have a whole lot of knowledge and your projectors for one, you, you basic knowledge, fundamental stuff that anybody would buy, you know, would have if they bought one, right? But you're still walking around claiming that the P2 has 250,001 contrast ratio. That's, you, you realize that's dynamic contrast ratio, which is basically a marketing tool, has no real substance, no real meaning. The actual native contrast on that projector, just like mine, is somewhere in the 3,000 to 4,000 to 1 ratio. So folks have come to learn that they can't really turn to you for true information about projectors. They also can't turn to you for true information about screens because you've never given them any. What is one detail? Um, there's three things that I've heard you say about your screens. Buy my mix, buy my mix, right? Quality, I mean, let's be honest, one of the world's most subjective terms ever quality and holds up in some light some i guess being a technical term these days because some is extremely contextual right for example i can say hey crow did you get did you get some of that cake and you say well i got some or i could say hey crow did you get some of that cake and you could say i got me some and the contexts are different so you're not giving anybody any kind of information relative to your product. Why? Because you can't. It's like I heard Bird talking a couple of days ago. He was going on about screen gains. Educating everybody how much he knows about screen gains. Said all white screens are a 2.0 gain. Ha! <laughs> Bam! Wrong. Uh... Also, when he was talking about, like, the Dark Star 9, and that he was saying those were 8 and 9s, okay? Now, I don't know if he was trying to say that they were point eights or point nines, which, you know, <laughs> he has no clue. But you can't give out bad information like that, because if I said, if you said, hey, Danny, how much money do I have coming back to me? And I said 8 or 9, and then you held out your hand and I put 8 cents in it. Rather than $8, you'd probably be pissed, right? Because your mind went to dollars. You're putting out bad information. You don't know what screen gain is. And Crow, neither do you, because that time that you were actually showing that one screen up against yours, when you said, I don't know what my gain is, but I think it's about a 1-3. Ha! <laughs> Again, jokes. No, not even close to a 1-3. Probably more akin to a 0.8. But you don't know. And you you put out bad information for people. And you never really know anything about your products. If the products you sell, you don't know. But you're going to come and question me. Let me give you another thing. You know, you, you just learned in your first church installation thing here. You seemed awfully surprised that they wanted your lighter screens. Now, I want you to think back for the past three years, what has Parte been saying? Daystar, our lightest screen, is the baseline for church installations. Now, how would we know that, Crow? But that's not the end of it. There's even more you need to know. But you don't. See, that's the reason if I had to grade you on that install, I'd say C. And if I was being really nice on a good day, I'd give you maybe a C plus because you didn't really optimize them for that stage. As a matter of fact, in the end, what we saw is that all the lights had to be off before it looked decent. But yet, if you notice the one, the 120 inch Daystar that I showed you, I was standing directly. And this is where people don't pick up on things. They don't connect the dots. But I was sitting underneath that screen, maybe about four feet, six, four or five feet away from the wall. I was not within the optimal viewing range of that screen, and it still looked good. But if I was standing on the stage on the opposite side of the room, I get pop. Whoa! Why? Because that's where those people are seeing it from. See, the people sitting back there where the screen is, they're not watching that screen. 
So it was optimized for the choir, which will be sitting on the other side of the screen. There's so many facets. When you get into church installation, some of these screens are setting anywhere from 10 to 20 plus feet off the ground. So you have to know your angles, you have to know how to optimize them, and that is not just color, okay? Color, when I say that, that Daystar is the baseline, it's rare that we change the color. Sometimes we'll go a little lighter, sometimes a little darker, but it's usually around the screen gain. Once again, something neither you nor Ken know how to control, but you guys are going to question me whenever I put out more information, more factual information, more insight into screen design than you and him ever have in all the videos you've ever created. So here's my thing. If you're going to be positive, go do it. Stop coming out here trying to crop dust your little stink bombs out there just because your butt's hurt. Okay? And then sit in a church parking lot and talk about how humble you are. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, that's jokes. Because you're really not. You're not humble. You're not that young. And I'll let others decide on the stud component. But that was funny too. Alright. So we'll have our knockoff projectors... Uh, uh, video coming up soon. Uh, actually, it's going to be about more than just knockoffs. We're going to talk about categories of that, um, including some toy projectors and things like that out there. So, uh, just want to say thank you to the guy next door for the video that he put out. Uh, that was totally him. Uh, just so folks know, it wasn't like I went out and asked him to do it. Uh, as a matter of fact, he kind of reached out to me and said he was putting something together, wanted to know what my thoughts were. And my thoughts were uh, pretty much just, hey, this is nice, thank you very much. Uh, because I think that the detail speaks for itself and he does an excellent job of being able to bring together where Ken tells lies and then, excuse me, Ken will tell a lie and then tell another lie later and then he'll tell the truth, which just shows the lies that he told. So, good for that. Just want to let everybody know that we appreciate you being patient because we've been kind of busy with some family stuff here. Uh, and, you know, it's probably going to be sketchy as far as sales between now and uh, the middle of July because, you know, we have the weddings that are all coming up and there's been some last minute have to go do this or have to go approve that or have to go build this, uh, collect this. We've had some different flower arrangements and stuff that came in that were wrong. So by the middle of July, uh, we're going to be in a position where we, we have full and free open road. Uh, my sons will have been moved out. Uh, it'll just be me and Kelly here. Uh, we got a guest that'll be with us for a little portion of that time, but that shouldn't hinder us whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I might even put them to work. You guys take care, and we will talk real soon. Bye.